Hello and happy new year to all of my embroidery friends. I'm just delighted that you've joined me today. I'm Eileen Roach and I couldn't be happier than to be right here with all of you. I hope you had a great holiday break. Today, we're going to talk all about, you know, making things in the hoop, right? Of course, where else would we do that? We are embroiderers and we're always working in a hoop. But I kind of have a new saying that it goes, if I can't, uh, if I can't stitch it in a snap hoop monster, I'm probably not going to stitch it, right? So I see some lovely comments. So many of you are tuning in. Our, our friend from Portugal and we have Shopaholic over in the Netherlands. We love hearing them from people all over the world and most certainly all over um, the US. But uh, Laura Parks had such a lovely comment. I have to give you a shout out, Laura. Happy New Year to you. And what a nice comment that you uh, have something heartwarming to look forward to or between between friends uh, session. And we look forward to it all week too. So thank you for joining us. You know, I, we kind of saw your comment a little earlier and we were swooning over it. And Gloria, my teammate said, um, she's here every week as many of you are. I know we're familiar with lots of these faces. Rita Ranke is almost always the first one to join in and wish all of everybody a, a warm hello and a uh, happy new year to you too, Risa. So, oh, we got Annie Price from New Zealand. You know, you don't have to be out of the USA to impress us, right? Because we love all of our friends, whether they're in New Mexico, like Rio Rancho or Pittsburgh, PA or Dallas, Texas, it doesn't matter. Or if you embroider and you're joining us here on Between Friends, we are thrilled that you're here. So um, I hope you'll enjoy everything we have in store for 2024. And of course, it's a lot, right? I want to know what you're hoping to learn this year in 2024 in embroidery. So answer that in the comments and tell me what task or kind of projects or techniques that you're hoping to be more proficient at in 2024. And maybe we'll uh, tackle some of your suggestions. But for today, we're going to talk about making it in the hoop. And that is piecing in the hoop, embellishing pre-printed uh, pre printed, printed panels, and quilting in the hoop. So I'm going to go over to the overhead cam and show you exactly what project I'm talking about. And that is our Four Seasons mini quilt. These are great little home decor items. They are, uh, you know, three different panels that you piece together. Each is made in the hoop. So this is pre-printed and then you stitch the birds and um, the quilting and the outline of the picket fence on the side panel. This tulip block is all pieced in the hoop. This panel at the top, you have, you're going to embroider birds, some little hearts, the bird cage, and of course the quilting that spring. The four season panel includes obviously all four seasons. Here's summer and you know this little landscape is all pre-printed. You don't have to piece that together but you will place it in the hoop and make sure you know with some simple guidelines that are included in the panel and in the instructions and the embroidery designs you'll be able to line up those quilting stitches that accent like the sand and the water and swirls in the cloud and of course our sailboat is all pieced in the hoop and maybe my favorite part of this whole little project are those fun sun sunglasses summer is printed on the fabric, but you're going to stitch that frame. And we opted to use variegated thread for that. Fall, you know, we get a little deeper, a little darker into the colors. Again, we have a piece in the hoop 
block, a printed panel here that you are going to add all those decorative leaves and the quilting. And then on the top panel, we have birds that you'll stitch and kind of a chalky looking autumn letters that hang from these little tendrils that are on the printed tree limb on the panel. Winter is what we're going to focus on today because it's cold, right? I love this little guy. Really fun snowman. He's fairly animated. It's got a great big smile. His arms are uplifting, you know, greeting that summer sunshine. But look at the beautiful snowflakes that you actually quilt, right? It's part of the embroidery design. You quilt right in there. And you're going to be able to land his limbs and his hat and his scarf in the correct position. Again, we have a pieced block. And then our top panel is the quilting of the word winter, filling in the snowscape. And then again, you're going to quilt these really fun snowflakes and stippling. All of that is included in the panel. So let's open up a package so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. It comes in the Ziploc bag. And of course, you're going to download your embroidery files, right? And all of the embroidery that you saw on all of these different panels is included, of course, with the purchase. How could you do this without them, right? And you're going to get uh, 21 pages of instructions so, you know, so that you know exactly how to embellish each individual season. So here, I'm just going to fold this open to the winter quarter of the panel. And you can see it's bigger than my screen will allow. So I'm gonna pull up the individual pieces, but all of it is sectioned off in this printed panel so that you know exactly what fabrics go with what season. So here you can see I have that black line. That means everything inside that black line, if that square is for winter and everything on this side would be for fall and summer and spring. So let's take a look at those individual pieces of each one. And we'll start with the, uh, the printed panels. So here is, now I've already embellished both of these, but this is the two panels, our, our side, side panel of the snowman. And then we have our winter topped arch section that caps off your, um, little landscape. And, and then, of course, you're going to have fabric to do your piece in the hoop section. So you actually have two pieces of fabric for winter. You're going to have the dark blue and the yellow. In the kit or in the collection, you will receive um, PDF files of the cut pieces for the patch, right? So let's go ahead and take that winter so we can see. So our yellow patches make up the star. We have one, two, three, four half square triangles, and then of course a center square. So that's what you see here. Now I printed my, um, my PDF on our print and stick target template paper so that I could just place it on the fabric and then I would cut right on that line. Seam allowance is already included. If you have a digital cutter, you could use the SVG and FCM files that come in the collection. That choice is up to you. And then, of course, here is the blue fabric for all of the blue uh, patches. And here are those corresponding pieces. So we're going to have four squares and four half square triangles, as you can see. Here's my four outside squares and then my half square triangles. And it's so fun to piece them in the hoop. And in fact, we're going to um, show you that. So let's go ahead over to um, the, the other computer and I'm gonna show you that piecing process. Okay, let's see, Terry Harrison, you said that you bought this last, last year and you have, have done nothing with it. Come on, Terry, get it out of that bag and use it because it's super fun to do, really easy. You know, you'll do the winter section first, right? Because right now it's winter and it will be complete, you know, before dinner. It only takes, oh, I don't know, maybe two hours at the most. It's really pretty fun. Uh huh. Okay, so let's see. Over here, I have, a, I have two mice here today, right? Two mice, they're both black. 
Don't ever do that if you have to have two mice because it gets a little confusing. So first off, the special. Today's program is bought, brought to you by for the Four Seasons Mini Quilt and it is $59.99. So uh, and let's go ahead and take a look at the process of piecing in the hoop. Now, this technique is applicable to any piecing in the hoop block that you may already home, own. So I'm just gonna teach, show you my method. The first color, now that block is actually going to be done in three different segments. It, you know, it's a nine patch, right? So it has three different rows and we're gonna piece each row together. And when we have those three completed, we're then gonna seam the three rows together. The first color of each row is going to be the schematic, the outline of each patch and the number. So you know, oh, okay, number one, that's where I put fabric number one. Now, when I stitch this to teach you how to do it, I stitch it in black thread so that you can see it and I can see it. But when I'm actually doing it for myself, I stitch it in white thread, something that is going to blend in with the stabilizer. Now, the stabilizer that I'm using here is our no-show cutaway stabilizer that works wonderfully for this process. You can also use our tearaway washaway stabilizer, which is piece and stitch. Now, that's it's kind of papery, right? Like a tearaway, and it will eventually dissolve in the quilt, not dissolve like water soluble, but kind of like a, a Kleenex, like a tissue. It, all the fibers just kind of evaporate, sort of. <laughs> you know how that is with a tissue, right? Okay, first thing you're gonna do is lay down patch one and you'll place that right side up and it will stitch the tack down. And then the next thing you do is take patch two and place that right sides together and let it stitch the seam. And then you flip it open. And as you flip it open, finger press that crease, right? Run your finger right down that crease and that will let the patch lay in position, nice and flat because the next step or the next color of the sequence is a tack down of that patch too. And you know, it's so important, right? To stitch those tack downs because that's what keeps them all in line. Okay, next up is, you know, patch number three, same step. Face down and stitch and then flip it open and then it will tack it down. And then pat the, this is the last patch of that top row. And again, you know, right sides together, stitch, flip it open, finger press that seam really well, and then let it do the tack down. Now that first row is complete. And we're going to continue in that very same fashion for row number two and row number three. Now, remember, you know, the rows are not identical because, you know, we're making a star here. So you do have to pay attention to your patches and, and the order that they go into. But, you know, that's what the schematic is for, right? Because it's going to outline either a half square triangle there or a full square. And you'll have a an image of the block, the finished block in the instructions. So you'll know um, your end vision, right? Your end result. So you'll know which step to do next. Now here you can see that I did stitch that schematic in white thread. And you can see it on the screen I, when, at my sewing machine, I can most certainly see it. But you know, if you have trouble seeing a light thread on a white stabilizer, then go ahead and stitch that schematic in a contrasting color because in the winter project, it's not really gonna be visible. So let's see, okay, patch number, whatever number that is, but it's number two in the second uh, row and then on and on and on. And now we have patch, our second row is complete and you can see it's beginning to look like a star, but you'll notice the, 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 the rows are not pieced together yet because it's time to do that last row. And we'll just kind of go through this quickly because it's the very same process as you have just seen. And there you have it. Now we have our three rows and we're gonna piece them back together. Now you could go to the sewing machine and do this manually, right? Not, not with needle and thread and hand, but with your sewing machine, you most certainly could. So um, 
And if you were to do that, what you would do is place the first row right sides together with the second row and stitch just inside that tack down. Okay, just inside that tack down. But you could also do it on the embroidery machine like we're gonna do here. So it's kind of hard to see this, but in the batting on the right-hand side uh, is the schematic of the next step. And so I have hooped batting only for this step and I've stitched my schematic and then I'm going to place my first row in place and it will stitch a tack down. It goes all the way around. Okay, and let's see. Lori, call, we'll just interrupt for a minute. So Lori Coglin wants to know, do you sell something to display the little quilt? Well, I'm glad you asked because we most certainly do. And it comes with the panel. So you don't have to pay extra for the panel. It comes right with your purchase. You will receive that fabric, the download link for all the embroidery designs, the SVG and FCM and PDF files for the patches of each block. And of course, there are four blocks. And you'll also receive this. And believe it or not, it comes flat. I'm just going to flip this to the side so you can see. Let me move my fingers out of the way. But this base is comes flat. And I'll bend it back so you can see. You don't want to do this a million times. Eventually, it'll, it'll break. But a couple times, it is fine. So it comes in flat. And then once you receive it, you just bend it so it's horizontal. And there's your, um, there's your little stand. I love the stand because all four of those season panels fit just perfectly on it. So nice. So nice. Yeah. And let's see. Creative Applique says piecing in the hoop makes perfect quarter inch seams. Boy, you're not kidding. And if you struggle with getting your points to meet, Piecing in the hoop is for you, I'll tell you, because it is really, really uh, the precise way to piece. Okay, let's see. My friend Mary Larson wants to know, you don't use stabilizer under the batting. No reason to use stabilizer under the batting at this time because I'm not doing any embroidery at all. All I'm doing is piecing in the hoop. So just, Mary, if you were piecing on your sewing machine, you will also would not use any stabilizer. So same rules apply when you are piecing in the hoop. So let's go ahead back to PowerPoint, those step outs, so you can see um, where we are. So all I've done is that tack down, right? I've, I've uh, Color one was the schematic of the outline, and then I placed my first column, and it stitched the outline. And now I'm placing... I call them columns and rows too. I'm kind of using them, using that interchangeably. Um, and in this case, it doesn't really matter, right? So then I take the next row and place that right sides together and uh, stitch that seam and then flip it open and stitch the tack down. And now in the next image, you could see I'm adding number three. I know it's so cool. And then when that is done, because I have my batting, in the hoop, I could just go ahead and quilt it at that time. Now, it's not gonna have any backing fabric on it, it's just gonna be the batting, but that's fine because we're creating kind of a koozie, right? Or a pillowcase that's just gonna slip over our stand. We don't need to have backing fabric inside of it, okay? Isn't that easy? So much fun. These piecing in the hoop blocks are, this whole kit is a great way to get your feet wet with piecing in the hoop with an embroidery machine because you're gonna get all the files. You don't really have to figure anything out. You don't have to resize anything. And in fact, you really should not resize any of these files because if you do, then they won't fit the fabric that was created specifically for these projects. So, okay. Now let's kind of get to the fun part of embellishing the printed panels. So we're gonna start with the snowman and let me switch over to um, that video. And just with a snowy go. landscape, the three circles um, for the body of the snowman. And you are going to add in his arms, his hat, his face, his buttons, his scarf, and all that quilting. And there's even some accent quilting in the snow. 
So you're probably wondering, how am I going to master that? Well, there's arrows, green arrows that have been printed on the fabric. And we just ask you that you insert a pin into each arrow just to extend that center you know, off the fabric so it's easier to identify. And then you're going to stitch the, the first color of the embroidery design and with a no-show cutaway stabilizer and then lay a piece of batting on top and stitch color one, which is the placement guide. And you'll notice it has a notch on each side of the panel uh, of the embroidery design. And then you simply take these pins and place them over the notches, just making sure that they're aligned, you know, all four sides. And then I do suggest that you pin it in place. And the next step is going to be a tack down. So you can, you can look at the embroidery design and decide where to place those pins. If you put it in the body of the sky, you know, in the center, you definitely won't stitch over it on color number two, because color number two is just going to be a tack down. Then you can remove those pins. So here you can see it actually stitching. So my friend, uh, let's see, somebody asked what, Laura Parks, I think, asked what size hoop is required for this adorable little project. Well, it's a six by 10, and that's because the curved uh, top or this whole winter panel at the top is our longest piece and the little project finishes at 10 by 10 so it's 10 inches tall and 10 inches wide uh, this block our piece block is uh, i don't i don't remember what size it is but a six by ten will uh i think it's a five inch block uh, will work perfectly for this project. And again, remember, let's not resize these designs because they are all digitized to specifically work with this fabric. But as you can see, the, as it stitches, you know, those beautiful snowflakes, you don't have to worry about free motioning them. And you don't have to worry about the placement of the buttons on the snowman or the scarf the hat, the limbs, all of that is figured out in the digitizing. So it just lands right where it's supposed to. And then when it comes out of the hoop, that's done. It's as easy as that. Isn't that so sweet? So um, now to do the, uh, the winter part is really very easy also. You're just going to do the same technique where you Put a pin into each of those green triangles or notches, and that's designating the center of the top and bottom, right and left. And then you're going to hoop your no-show cutaway stabilizer and place a piece of batting in the hoop on top. You don't have to hoop the batting and stitch color number one, which is the tack down of the batting. And it's also the outline that shows where the center marks are for all four sides of the block. And once you do that, you match your, um, your pins, <laughs> sorry. You match the pins to the stitched notches right? You could see I'm matching the pin to those little triangles to smooth it in place. The next color will stitch a uh, tack down, go all the way around, and then it will stitch. It's just one color. Is the, well, it's two colors because winter is stitched in dark blue, so you can read it. And of course, the snow is stitched in white, so you can see that on the pretty uh, midnight blue fabric. So now once we have it, those two pieces, the, the, pre, the printed panels embellished and our block, it's time to assemble the, the unit. And that's easy. So on the top panel, you'll want to trim, uh, you'll want to place the quarter inch mark of a quilter's ruler at the very bottom of the word winter, right? So that's what's really important. And you'll trim away the excess fabric on that area, just underneath winter. Do not trim on the sides or the top. That will come later. So you're only going to trim the bottom because you're going to piece that top section to sashing. 
And you get two versions of sashing. I happen to love this like candy, candy stripe uh, by, well, it's, you know, candy stripe diagonal stripe. And, uh, but you also get a hunter green. So that would be your choice, whichever one you want to do. And once that is stit, uh, is trimmed and you piece the sashing to it, Here's a close up so you can see exactly where that quarter inch line is, right? Just on the bottom of winter. And all of this has been thought out very carefully so that is um, so, so that um, everything works and fits. Now, Tommy Wilkins says that the quilt is out of stock. It's not out of stock. We, I, uh, I'm pretty sure, and let's have a team member check that, make sure that, um, there isn't something off in the shopping cart because we are down to our last part of the of uh, of our printed batch and when they go they are gone we won't reprint this but we, i know that we have enough uh, I, I know that we have enough so uh, for today believe me i don't think that we've sold out of what we have at this moment so let's see okay once we get that done, you'll follow the instructions on how to trim the snowman block and also the star block. And basically it's always quarter inch seam allowance and you're really gonna place the quarter inch line of a quilter's ruler on the outside of the embroidery or the quilting. And you will um, trim away the excess and then piece with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now. At the bottom of the sashing or the bottom of our panel, you're going to cut that. And the instructions are, are in, all these instructions are included in the package. This you're going to cut a little bit deeper, I think about uh, a half inch. And then um, you're going to fold up the bottoms just so that you finish it and, and you have a finished edge and you'll edge stitch that. So that's the only difference there. And once you have that all pieced, the units together, then you're going to place that whole pieced unit, which frankly doesn't look all that great at this point, right? Because um, the top is kind of square. It's a little awkward looking, but you're going to place that whole thing on the fabric that was supplied uh, in the panel for the back of our project. And you can see that's just plain starry fabric and it's a big square. It's about 13 inches square. And you'll place your piece unit on top of that. And you will then take the arch pattern that is included in your download and you'll print that out and you'll put that right on the um, fabric on the, the back of that top panel making sure that the bottom of the arch panel panel is right at the bottom of the word winter. And if you do that and pin it in place and then sew around it in this fashion, it will come out just perfect and fit that stand that we designed specifically for this project. So isn't that awesome? I know. Let's see. So they're still saying that it says out of stock, but um, friends, if you use that link that is uh, in the chat here and you can see it's on the screen, that will take you right to um, the Four Seasons quilt and you can purchase it there. So hopefully that will um, that will uh, get it to work. And, and I hope my team is working on that, making sure it's there because we want it to be there. You know, it was so fun making this. And, you know, I think every quarter that, you know, you're going to be able to change out your home decor. You'll start with winter and then when spring comes and don't we love hearing the birds of springtime right in the air? That's why I, I designed that panel. Let's go ahead and pick that up so you can see how fresh that is for spring. It is just, you know, the bird cage is what you stitch there and the little bird on top and the birds on the birdhouses over here. And the tulip block is so fun. And then of course it's time for summer. You're gonna have a sailboat, a beach scene, and those really fun sunglasses. And lastly, fall. So if you purchase this today, get started on it. And you know, as the seasons come up upon, you know, in time, then you stitch the next season. It's really fun. So I hope that you, um, enjoyed that. And those of you who have already made us, let us know. Now, 
have you, I asked earlier in the program, what kind of tasks or projects or techniques in machine embroidery are you hoping to master this year? Now, somebody said they would like more information or more education on stitching on wearables. So we most certainly can do that for sure. And uh, what else are you uh, interested in? Are you looking at uh, more piecing in the hoop? Do you like to learn about applique? You know, what what all are you trying to do? Let's see. They all say it still says out of um, out of stock. So I'm sure we're going to be able to get this uh, working because we have it in stock. And let's see, Jennifer Alexander, you want to do bag making? Awesome. Okay, I like that. I love to make bags. I've done tons of bags, and. Uh, you know, I like to make some parts of the bag in the hoop, but really I like a functional bag. So often, you know, they're bigger than a hoop allows, right? So I'll do some elements of the bag in the hoop. Like I like to do the handles, um, the strap ends and anchor them to the bag with my embroidery machine. I like to do the shape of the bag, like the corners and so forth. So, um, yeah, let's see. Leslie Gardner says she can't get enough software education. Me too, for sure. We're always learning about that. And, you know, lucky for you, Leslie, we have um, Ashley Jones is our is our ex software extraordinaire. And she does two Facebook Lives a, a month on software. And so I have information on that coming up and piecing in the hoop. Uh, making earrings. Uh, Joan Shriver, you've been making earrings and you're excited to make more. Me too. Sheila, you want to do applique? Yeah. I mean, applique is always a winner, always a winner. Um, and, you know, there's so much you can do with applique. You know, there's the traditional satin edge. There's the funky raw edge. There's, you can make it even funkier with a frayed edge. And, oh, yeah, applique is a lot of fun. So we'll definitely be doing more of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and let's see, Sharon Jones, you say you need help with the shower, flower box quilt. Can you do something on that? Sure, we could do something on that. Sharon, what exactly are you struggling with? Is it the the blocks or the quilting? Tell me about that and we can review that. Uh, let's see, review all the placement techniques and to assist with edge to edge quilting. Yeah, well, I love edge to edge quilting, you bet. I mean, I could teach that every week. That's like my favorite thing to do. Oh, did I say that out loud? I didn't mean to say that out loud, but it is. I really do love to quilt with my embroidery machine. As you can see, weightless quilter here, that's all we do. Okay, so they're all saying, yay, that new link worked. Love that, love that. So please use that last link that came into the uh, chat and uh, use that to purchase. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, we really do appreciate your business for sure. Let's see, how to replace or add images to artwork in a hoop. Hmm, how to replace or add images to artwork in a hoop. Uh, yeah, not sure about that. Um, I mean, I can do that in software. I can't do that at the machine. That's so, anyway, okay. Let's say it's the understanding of blocks. And it has stumped you so far. Of course, you moved on to something else. Okay, Sharon, it's the understanding of the blocks. Okay, so yeah, let's do the flower box quilt in a coming up, um, in a coming up between friends for sure. So, but you know, many of you have talked about you know wanting software education. So Ashley Jones will be with you on January sixteenth at one o'clock. And she will be teaching about cut and stitch software. Then now this is part two. This past Tuesday, she did part one of getting started with cut and stitch software. So if you missed it, you can still watch it. All of these between friends, all of these software success uh, episodes, broadcasts are always on YouTube and Facebook. So you can go back and rewatch. And, you know, they're handy to refer to. You know, you can always jump back at a time later on when like when you're going to be working on your Four Seasons quilt and you're wondering, how did that star block go together? Well, you can come back to this broadcast and just, you know, fast forward to that segment that you need a little bit more um, education on. So, yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm excited to see her part two because part one was really great. Okay, we hope that you will subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook because that is how um, 
how we know you are engaged and interested and that we are providing the right information for you. So um, we, we would really appreciate that if you did that. Now, let's see. Sandy Arf says she wants to quilt around applique on a long arm. Hmm. Well, you can use our um, quilting software to, if your long arm is a computerized long arm and that you can, you know, uh, send digitized files to it, you could use our software to do that because our software saves in all uh, long arm formats in addition to embroidery formats. So it's really no different, Sandy, than quilting around an applique in an embroidery machine hoop, right? It's just that your sewing field is humongous. Unlike, you know, our 10 by 16 or 11 by 18, whatever we have in our embroidery studio. So, uh, but yeah, we can definitely teach you how to do that. My Quilt Embellisher is the software that I would probably use for that. Um, and Ashley has taught that on Software Success. So if you go, maybe it's easiest to find it on our YouTube channel and go to uh, Designs and Machine Embroidery on YouTube and search for Software Success and look for cl the classes on My Quilt Embellisher. And you can save all the designs that are in My Quilt Embellisher into a long arm format. So yeah. Definitely. Okay. So I'm going to be back next week on January 11th, and we're going to be talking a lot about thread. So it might be a really great time to revisit, um, you know, organization of thread and storage and how to, you know, how to use thread and, and get with different results, right? What colors work best on, you know, how to blend and how to pop. All of that is important in embroidery. Sometimes we want things to just blend into each other. And other times the, the whole idea of, you know, an embroidery design or a specific one could be uh, to make it pop, to really contrast with the base fabric. So that's what we'll get into next week. That's a lot of fun. And, and also maybe some ideas on how to select color, right? because many of us struggle with selecting color. So I have some great tips on that for um, working with color next week. Okay, well, you know, it's just about time to show you the On the House, uh, which is our free design program that we ran all last year. We're going to be doing it again this year. And I just want to say thank you to Sin for Rest. Um, she says that she loves these shows and thank you so much and Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you too. And I appreciate your kind words. You know, we put our heart and soul into all of these projects, all these broadcasts, and we hope that it brings you um, enjoyment and knowledge, right? Because it doesn't do us any good to just keep it all inside. You know, I'm happy to share it. So our On the House program continues in 2024. And if you're not familiar with it, you can go to our website, www.dzgns.com, and then click on embroidery, right? At the top, you're going to see those headers, embroidery, quilting, embellishments. So just click on, uh, oh, design and project is the first um, header that you'll click on. And as you scroll down under embroidery, you'll see free designs, right? And when you go to free designs, um, you're going to find all of last year's on the house designs still there in one zip file. So that's what you'll see for a limited time. We're only going to leave that up uh, probably through the end of January. So if you didn't follow along all last year and grab every single design, you can still do that now. Just go to, on, to those steps I just showed you and click on this icon and you're going to get all 52 designs in one download in one zip file. You will then have to unzip it. And then I personally haven't seen that myself. So it's going to be a lot of folders. It's going to be 52 different folders for sure. So, um, you know, but it's worth it. So like Diana, she says, Diana Holoka says she loves the free designs and all the wonderful products and demos. She's having fun with her magnetic hoop and you're quilting in the hoop this morning. Happy day at your house, Diana, right? How, oh, I'm so glad to hear that. That's, that's just makes my heart happy for sure. So let's see. And Marianne de Blaga, you struggle with thread colors? Yeah, I know. And you love it when all the color, when you have all the colors that a design 
calls for. Otherwise, it's a little tricky to substitute. I agree. It can be tricky. But, you know, I have found by previewing my design in software and really looking at it in the colors that either the, the designer suggested or Marianne, if it if you don't have those colors, that's where you can preview them, you know, in software. But anyway, we're going to talk about that next week. So I appreciate your feedback on that. Let's see. Uh, and Patsy, you didn't get all of them, but one month does not provide the EXP version. Oh, Patsy, no problem. Just down, you know, I hope that you have our free embroidery software, which is our embroidery tool shed. And in embroidery tool shed, you just open up whatever design you need converted to EXP and you're good to go. You, you know, so don't worry about that. That that format wasn't there for sure. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about you sharing your project with us because it really is um, inspiring for us to see what you're doing with these free designs and the projects that I design every month. So if you would do that and share it on social media, gosh, we just love it. And so do all the other viewers of Between Friends and those who watch uh, Ashley's Software Success. Just use your hashtag dime so long or on the house or exquisite thread, and then we'll be able to find it and put it in a in a reel uh, that we can share with you. So let's take a look at how you do that. We would love to see any creations you all make with our free on the house designs. To do that, we have to be able to find your designs first. Go to Facebook and create a new post for your latest project. Make sure that your post is set to public view and add a quick description and photo of what you've made. Now the important part, adding your hashtags. You're going to want to use hashtag on the house, hashtag dime so long, and hashtag exquisite thread. And that's it. Now you can click post. Look at what my friend Amy, uh, um, let's see, Amy says, she says uh, she had so much fun with last year's designs. Well, Amy, we'd love to see your work. So please share it on social media. Use the dime so long, hashtag on the house, exquisite thread. You don't have to use all three. It's great if you do, but any one of them, if you use any one of them, then um, we'll be able to um, find it and share it. So let's see. Tammy, you want to know what is the website? Our website is www.dzgns, and that's where you'll find all of our free designs and all of our products. But speaking of free designs, let's go ahead and look at this week's on the house design. And boy, is she cute. Look at her. Is she adorable? This is our snowy girl. She just loves winter. She's all bundled up with a scarf, mittens, and hat on a, in a snowy landscape. And um, she is just uh, adorable. And she's got a sister that's going to come up pretty soon in, in a week or two. So be tuned, be in tune for that. So let's see, uh, Sandy Arp wants to know, where do we find Ashley Jones's videos? You find all of our videos on YouTube or Facebook. So if you go over to YouTube, you can um, just search for designs and machine embroidery and you'll find our channel. And then subscribe to our channel if you would, please. And also uh, there you can view it by most recently added. You can view it by, uh, view it by pap popularity, or you can search by topic. You know, YouTube has those great features. So um, I hope that you'll take advantage of that. And um, Sin for Rest has a really lovely comment. I just wanted to uh, give a shout out. She says she wants to say a huge thank you to whoever invented Kingstar Metallic Thread. She quilted an entire quilt for her new great grandson. Not one thread break. Woo woo. That is almost a miracle, but not with Kingstar, right? We actually expect Kingstar to act like that and to perform like that. We know that it is the world's best running thread, and that's why we use it all the time. We didn't invent it, but we do have the exclusive distribution in the United States on, Queen, on Kingstar thread. So uh, we're just thrilled to bring it to the U.S. market and for all embroiders to use. So 
and I'm sure we'll be doing some uh, metallic thread in the upcoming year. So anyway, thank you so much. And I am just uh, thrilled to be back here in 2024 with all of you. And I look forward to lots more education, lots more fun. And thanks for all your comments today. I learned a lot about what you're looking for in education for 2024. And I'm going to pass that on to our team and we will get on it. We'll see you next week. Same time. Take care. No.